Hey, Sean G here from Chasing the Truth. You're about to get some of the best of samples of shows I've done over the last five years. God bless y'all and enjoy. I really didn't have uh, the intentions of sharing this. And at the end of the recording of our conversation or exchange, I was still on the fence about even sharing this with anybody. But this gentleman has a fantastic story to tell, and I want to share this with you. This gentleman from South Africa claims that he was part of many hunting parties that went into various countries throughout the world, except Antarctica. That will, um, that story will come out in the recording. But um, he went out and hunted these cryptids, dogmen, Sasquatch, and various other cryptids creatures for the bounty on their heads. That's how he made his living. Now he's retired from this uh, profession, but uh, he uh, um, he and I got together and started talking over Skype. And uh, the next thing I knew, I was knee deep into uh, a wild story that you know, obviously is going to be really controversial <laughs> for various reasons with uh, the paranormal community that actually listens to this, this uh, type of genre. But, um, hell, it's, a, it's too damn good of a story not to share with anybody. So, folks, here it is. Let's chase the truth with a dog manhunter. Okay. And then as I keep saying in the chat, I used to be basically a monster hunter in my earlier years. Uh, that shit is not profitable. If you've ever read the book Monster Hunter International or any of its sequels, no, I don't believe I that. actually believe you should read, man. It's actually a gripping read. Okay. I think the writer of that, that book is actually describing shit he actually experienced. Because the description of the hunters, the government agencies, very close. The only thing I have a gripe with, with those books is the large amount the government pays you when you kill one of these creatures. Oh, okay. They pay an amount, but usually you barely make the profit. Due to cost of transport, ammunition, guns in different com countries, and to pay off the, your crews. So, how much? Uh, how much uh, is this? Like a large sum that they uh, give as a bounty for this stuff? Let me put it like this: a dog man. Mm -hmm. That's a very dangerous creature. I think it's about 7 million rand. Okay. That's about $100,000. Wow. Now, for the cost of teams, usually lodging, dungeon ammo, because iron, iron core rounds are not extremely cheap. So, and what, uh, uh, how, how often do they pay this ransom? When's the last time they you know, uh, paid a ransom for a dog man? I actually do that quite often. It doesn't get into the view, but dog men are, there are multiple areas with huge amounts of dog men in the state alone. Okay. And don't get me started about Russia. They have something, technically it's also a dogman, same species. Those things look like bears. Bears, okay. So, via Russia, bear walks on over you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got you, I got you. Big bear, big, big bear. <laughs> big ass bear. About one of my teammates were was American back then. I think the largest one he said he saw was 
Same foods. Uh, Those things are wide as well. The Russian ones. Ten foot tall, five foot wide. Mm-hmm. I don't know how those things stay upright, but they manage. Yeah. So, have you ever see, uh, see. have you ever seen any photographs of any of these uh, uh, real, you know, real life photographs that you've seen, like a friend or a neighbor or whoever that's uh, taken of any of these cryptic creatures that you've talked about? Oh, I take them usually. <laughs> I take them, but as soon as we get the reward, we mm. get bounties. Government destroys the equipment. Oh, okay, okay. So they they just want to they just want to get rid of the evidence. Period. So that's what you're telling, telling me. Yeah. Okay. Can you imagine the right? The panic someone will cause if they all of a sudden find out all these creatures are fucking real. Wow. Uh, yeah. Most of the bounty is usually ash money. Okay. So how so how many people would go out on these ventures to uh, on these hunts to kill a dog man? How, how many would they actually take along to do this? It depends on how crazy the hunters are. Oh, okay. My team is usually about twenty guys. Twenty guys for one for one dog man, or do you encounter more than one in one one setting? Usually. We go out for the smaller family groups. Okay. Three to seven. Three to seven. Yeah. Okay. Best tactic is to be sneaky. Sneaky. Okay. Yeah. So uh, easier than most. So to sneak up on them. Well, let me ask you a couple of questions. Uh, you know, my family and around here, the they hit uh, they. Um, hunt deer and bear and a lot of the large creatures like that, but they use a lot of uh, scent um, scent products like uh, to wash away your clothes, you know, scent off your clothes and you wash yourself before you go uh, on a hunt. Do you do something like that with this? Do you wash away your scent or do you have a scent attractant that uh, attracts these um, dog men? You usually wash away the scent. You usually wash it away as well. Mm-hmm. This camouflage we Tend to use is coyote urine. What kind of urine? How do we get it? Coyote. Coyote. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Makes you almost invisible to the things. Oh. Okay. I have. Okay. All right. That make, sort of makes sense to me. So, when's the last time you went out okay. on one of these hunts? It was about twenty ten. 2010 okay yeah. and uh how many was uh, how many uh, was in your party then 20 20 people or 28 at that one 28 okay yeah eight of the normal guys actually had were resigning same with me okay how well, about uh, resigning but like have you lost anybody that when you have these parties that go hunt? Have you lost anybody or got any people hurt while you're doing this hunt? Too many. Too many. Okay. Of a witch got hurt or you know, people that died going out on these parties? Yeah, but usually what we do is outside the country. Mm -hmm. That's usually where we lose them. Outside, we join up with other teams. All right. So basically, we play mercenaries there. So, uh, what country was? Uh, can you share which country you went to to do these hunt parties? There were a few in America, one in Canada, several in Siberia. I think one Northern Africa. Northern Africa. Okay. 
now. I was just okay. Okay, so who, who's paying the? Who is the entity that pays these ransom or not ransoms or bounties for these dogmen? I'm sure I'll be right with you now. Just quickly, have to do something. Okay. Hold up, please. Hello, up, please. Ninety-three. Yeah, boy. Okay, that depends on the country we're in. Okay, well, how about the last? Can you share the last one that you, that you were in? Who who was the entity that was paying these bounties for this? The yeah. Russian government. Russian mm -hmm. government. Okay. Yeah. Some of most of them I cannot actually disclose, but Russian government. The Russian government. So, how did you get a passport to get to Russia to hunt a dog man? What did you? That was was there a cover story for this hunting party, or um, did you just go in and say, "Hey, we're we're here hunting," and that was it? Basically, my cover story was I was visiting family. Visiting family. Okay. Based a family in Russia. Eh? <laughs> okay. All right, and, and then the something I'm, happened. I'm assuming if that the, the weapons and the ammo and stuff were supplied uh, once you got to the current country of origin. Usually, usually, okay. Yeah, not always, but usually. All right, well, that's interesting. Well, it makes sense to me. So, um, on that last hunting party back in 2010 uh, that you attended in Russia, how many of these dog men or dog family groups or packs or whatever, how many of those entities did you actually kill? Personally, I only got one, but that was a finish off shot. Okay. I had food poisoning for most of the trip. <laughs> oh, okay. So, how many did, did your party take care of? A bag or a kill or whatever you want to call it. That was mainly what was a training mission. We were training new, eight new recruits for. I took my place in seven of my comrades when we retired. But it was a case of killed three of them, mm -hmm. we were sent for three. We usually played more cautious with the Russian one due to their size. And have you ever seen like in a movie? The larger guy takes more damage than the rest before they go down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same thing with them. Like bloody bullet sponger. Okay. So uh what uh, what was your background to make you uh uh, one of the picks to be in a group to go hunt dogman. What was your background to do that? Being in the army and having bad timing. And having what? And bad luck. And bad, bad timing and bad luck. Oh, so you just uh, accidentally was in the area while you were in army and there was something in front of you that turned out to be a dogman, correct? It wasn't a dogman. Oh, it wasn't? Like that one. Oh, okay. Yeah. What was it? Or can you share that? Some version of a goblin. That's about all I can say about that. A goblin. That's interesting. I just heard of, uh, there's a spot uh, about 35 miles uh, northwest of me that just recently got popped up on the um, Coast to Coast AM. Uh, was, let's see, what was the place? Hellier, Kentucky is actually the name of the community. I've been there, drove through it a couple times in my lifetime, but it's just a, a really small um, community. And I was like, I heard it on, heard the, the the town mentioned. Not It's not even a town. It's just a little community is all of this. And I was like, what the hell are they talking the about? In the yeah. And it was about goblins. The, and UFOs yeah. and whatnot. So, so was there any like activity, like UFO activity around these uh, uh, 
hunting parties that you went to? Mom, no, I'm so I've been with. I'm sorry. One more time. Not the so I'm so I've been with. Okay. All right. Personally, I've never seen a UFO. Mm, okay. Never seen a UFO. All right. Uh, so over your career, uh, while you were doing these hunting parties, whether you were a part of a hunting party at your own admission or was just uh, in, in the wrong spot at the wrong time, how many of these creatures have you dispatched or killed yourself? Too many to count. I lost count about 30 hours in. 30 hours in? Okay. Is that on the... 30, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my involvement was usually... I was a tracker and a sniper. So that went with my vision. A uh, tracker and a... Okay. So, uh, down the... How much... Uh, how much weight would one of these average creatures weigh these dog men since you're a tracker? With a dog man, they're surprisingly light on their feet for their weight. Mm -hmm. The last time we weighed, I can't remember the exact weight, but close to 700 kilograms. Oh, okay, okay. That's a rather hefty creature. So, what kind of impression would it uh, would you be tra uh, where these creatures were? Was uh, was it more of a hard type ground that you were tracking over, or was it muddy, or just uh, just dependent? Usually, I track the poor at rights and twigs and leaves mm -hmm. in certain ways. Sometimes you find tracks. Um, most of the time, you just look for the surroundings. Okay. Uh, so, what kind of equipment would you be using to track these things? Was it just visual, or did you have heat uh, heat cameras, uh, or any of that kind of kind of stuff? My training is basically military scouting. Okay. Uh, Okay, military scouting when I was in the army was basically you don't rely on equipment and technology. You rely on your eyes and your wet. Okay. Now, sometimes you'll get lucky. The thing will make a mistake like you know these videos they you randomly see in the woods someone is tracking Bigfoot or something like that and they'll just randomly see something walk past. Okay. Most of those videos are fake, but sometimes the animals actually make that mistake. Uh, that's not often. Okay, what kind of intelligence did these creatures have, these dogmen or yeah, well, we'll just pick a dog, man. How, what kind of intelligence did these things have? Was it more of a of a, a bear or a dog, or was it more intelligent than that? Depends on the class you're hunting, hunting basically. Um, you get your idiot, technical term. Mm -hmm. We call them idiots. They... They are the ones that don't have any experience with hunting or anything. Mm -hmm. The young ones. Okay. You, see, you almost have human intelligence. Almost. Almost human. Okay. Yeah. So another term alpha. When talking about wolves. All right. Uh, uh, all the smarter, smarter ones. How would they communicate Those things with actually, you? Would they, uh, yeah, I've you, never communicated with any dogman or anything like that. Okay. Right. Shoot it, shoot it, kill it. 
Hey folks, thanks for listening to this best of sample of some of my five years in doing this radio show podcast called Chasing the Truth. Please visit imdarkwaters.com or you can email me at seanG at imdarkwaters.com and my numbers and uh, links are in the description below. God bless y'all and I'll catch you on the flip side.